you very much for La Caixa and um, to, to invite me here to share a little bit with you about um, what some, some of the things that I think about RRI and to hope to, to, to start a conversation or um, a talk with you about these interesting topics. So I'm going to take basically the results of RRI. And among the results of RRI, you have actors and you have topics. And here the presentation will be about the topics. But I'm going to take only four of the six topics that you underline as a result of RRI exercise that is ending today. The first one is ethics. The second one is open access. The third one is public engagement. And finally, science education. So let's start with ethics. You are in Europe, but Europe is exposed to the rest of the world. And anything that happens in Europe happens also in the rest of the world. So RRI cannot be, or at least in terms of ethics, cannot be just among Europeans. And I'm going to give you two examples why the, the ethics concepts should be broader than the European values. RRI vision should, or my, my thought about that, this is that you have to have a humanitarian point of view. And two examples of this, health. Yesterday, two of the nominees for the, the awards were talking about two of these 17 neglected tropical diseases affecting 149 countries in the world. And here are two examples, Zika and Chagas disease. This is how a person looks when it gets Zika. And you can get it very easily in countries such as India, Colombia, or other countries. And of course, that will also affect Europe. And you have cases of Zika and you have cases of Chaga disease in Europe. But if we don't think about collaboration between scientists of the world, it's going to be very difficult to address those issues. Yesterday, the two examples were malaria. OK, you get the examples outside, and then we will um, check them in Europe. And the second example is Chagas, which was, uh, according to the posters, were just people from Bolivia coming with a Chagas disease, and then it was a health issue in um, Spain. But you can also get Chagas disease and Zika, at least, uh, when you travel around the world. And you, as Europeans, you like to travel around the world. So here is something that The Guardian said on uh, July 29, 2016. is extremely low risk of Zika, however spread by sexual transmission. So it's something that will affect Europe. And the Chagas disease, which is stronger than the Zika, it also can be, uh, it's also reported in several European uh, countries. So my point here is you, if you want to think about RRI, there's a point to go broader and not just within Europe. The second example is environment. You, we all talk about climate change, and climate change is something that happens in the world. But, and you have very nice windmills in Belgium. These are from Belgium and from all around Europe. But if we don't take strong steps to protect the Amazon, which is the lung of the world, we're not doing much. So what I'm, I'm telling you is that RRI, in terms of ethics, should have a humanitarian basis. And how can you address that? With scientists of the world and with citizens of the world that will find solutions for the challenges of the 21st century. So here is collaboration, and that's a word that I've heard 
lots of times during these uh, two, day, two days, but collaboration among researchers, European researchers, and researchers of the South. You cannot solve the problems just by being here in your nice labs and trying to address these challenges of the world. The second one is open access, and here I'm going to give you some examples. Open access, it's a nice idea, and it was created in Europe. You have the Berlin Conference, you have the Budapest Conference, but also in Europe you have intellectual property rights, and you have this firm that all of us know very well. And these two concepts are not aligned. And here I'm going to talk to you about a case. One biologist, one Colombian biologist, decided to go for open access. And he decided to share um, a paper in a script platform. And he was prosecuted, like here, the Guardian is announcing to share an article online. So he believed in open access. He didn't know much about laws, and he was prosecuted. And he's, right now, he faces up to eight years in prison because he shared that without knowing the copyrights um, legislation. And here is a nice website from Europe saying, hey, we're going to support Diego Gomez. But he's already in jail. I mean, his life might be, might have, you know, big challenge because he, he trusts in open access. So my point here is <coughs> you have in Europe open access ideas and you have property rights, but there's a need to address the two of them and to find a way to talk to the rest of the world with clear ideas on is it open access, is it property rights, and that's a challenge for RRI. The third point is public engagement. You have to have an international vision because anything that happens in Europe affects the rest of the world and anything that happens in the world affects Europe. And here is your website, very nice website. And when I try to engage and to um, um, put my name here and my last name here, then the third step was find your country. And there was a very nice list of countries, Belgium, Spain, France, and other countries. How do I feel? An outsider. So my recommendation here is if you, if you want to have public engagement, then you need to be more inclusive. We're not going to become Europeans. Yeah? We don't want to become Europeans. But it's, it's nice to be, to feel that you are part of this exercise. It's nice to feel that you, as Europeans, are more inclusive with the rest of the world. And that's an opportunity for you to monitor what is happening in the rest of the world. So one of the, the, the other topics that you have there is governance. If, for instance, Colombia is checking a lot your website to find out tools for uh, local governance, then you know that they have an interest there. So it's an opportunity for you to monitor. So my idea is, why don't you uh, give the name of the rest of the countries and you can have a great tool there. Finally, science education. And science education with communication goals. You raised the, the need to talk about science with researchers or among researchers, with NGOs, with young people, with business industries, but you didn't raise enough the need to uh, talk about science with the media. And here is another example. The problem, the problem is that in Colombia, 
nine women die daily because of cervical cancer. So the problem is well diagnosed, is well understood. The solution, a vaccine against cervical cancer that was developed in France, and here is uh, Nubia Munoz, a Colombian woman that was part of the research team. Great, the problem, the solution. And then the policy makers in Colombia were engaged with this, and they gave free vaccine for the Colombian girls up to 12 years old, which was great. And were in public schools and in the hospital health system. However, a media report, and I'm going to ask you to uh, play the video, please. After this, this was first a national report, and then it became an international report. And the, the, uh, health, the National Health Institute of Colombia said, confirmed, the vaccine works. And of course, it can have some side effects. I'm not going to deny that. But here is that today in Colombia, despite the problem that we had, trust on the vaccine is against the cervical uh, cancer is broken, or I should say almost broken. So here you talk about uh, science education and science dissemination. And there's an actor that you should take into account, and it's the media. So you have to, to try to link all these different actors so that you don't have a case like the one that we had here. And the goals then will be to provide special training to the media. The other goal will be to educate common people to, with clear information on scientific research and innovation. But there's another actor that you should take into account, which is social media influencers. As you could see, now the Facebook and Twitter and all those new devices are creating, are, are putting a, um, a, a point in the information that common people have. So my recommendation is to include in the RRI tools social media influencers. So as conclusions, we have that Europe is leading right now in RRI, and it can become the international leader of RRI. Europe is not independent of the rest of the world, so the tools that you are creating should have a broader vision. Third conclusion is that Europe has the potential to trigger a humanitarian vision of RRI, and that's a huge responsibility that you have. And finally, that international approach of RRI should be based on collaboration among researchers and among citizens of the world, not based on charity. Thank you very much.